In this video, we are going to review a little bit from what we watched for last week. Uh, and we are going to start talking about images and how to add images to our websites. As we know, images are incredibly important on the web. Uh, prior to there being a graphical browser and images being allowed on, able to be uploaded onto the web, uh, the internet or the web, I'm sorry, was just text, people clicking text. Um, and it wasn't until the technology allowed images to be uploaded and the ease to make it easy to upload images, which can be rather large files, uh, not to mention video, which are huge. Um, text was all people really had. Uh, so we're going to talk about images um, in this video and another one we'll talk about accessibility and images. But this is going to be our introduction to images in this video. Uh, first, I just want to review the basic skeleton for all web pages. As I mentioned in our conferences, one of my only gripes about the Ducket book is that that sample content uh, that we used for the, our first homework assignment uh, does not include one of the main parts of the skeleton of all HTML pages, and that is the head section and the title. And we need to have these on our pages. So as you're working on your pages for this coming week, um, I want you to go back and double check that your index page that you created and your portfolio page that you created have this head area as well as the title. Now, the title should have your name in it, obviously not my name because it will be your web page you're working on and not mine. The head, again, contains information that does not display on the web page. The title shows in the browser tab. That's that little bit right at the top of the screen. And then after the head and the bot comes the body. Okay. The head is where a lot of the thinking goes on. The body is where all the action takes place. So we want all of the content that we're going to have on the page uh, will be in this body uh, area, all the content. Uh, so every tag that you want to be displayed on your page must go between these two body tags, paragraphs, headers, images, lists, everything that we're going to be creating will go in here. And then, of course, starting and ending it all is the HTML. Now, notice that everything is lowercase. We have a nice, clean, hierarchical structure where we have uh, indentations to mark off what kinds of uh, code we've got. And everything is clean coded in that it's nicely spaced and I can see everything. And clean coding is going to be one of those terms I'm going to be reinforcing again and again. And it's going to be part of what we're terming effective communication for this class. Uh, so please get in the habit of starting to do your clean coding now. Uh, I mentioned this in our, in our uh, conferences, but uh, please go back and uh, make sure your pages are clean coded. Uh, and when you're redoing your index page for this Monday or this week, I should add, please make sure what you're doing is clean coded. Now, when watching these videos, it's very easy to just watch and not actively take notes as if you are in a lecture in a classroom. <clears throat> and I strongly recommend you taking notes when watching these videos. Uh, don't just rely on the video being there. Uh, write down what's important, what you think is important, and then if you need to come back, you can. Uh, but please do take notes on, on what we're seeing on the screen here. And what's nice is, unlike in a live lecture, you can't stop me and rewind me. Uh, here you can, although that means hearing me blather on longer, I guess. So images. The basic structure for an image tag is as follows. And this is in the book, and, and you do need to read the book as well, because I'm only going to be covering a little bit here. The book is much more in-depth. IMG SRC equals and then we have our quotation marks there for now. Then we have alt title 
height and width. And then it self closes. This is the basic structure for image tags. Right. It must contain each of these elements before you begin to populate the elements with your content. Okay. This is your image source, IMG SRC. This is going to be the location of the image that you are using. The alt text and the title text we'll be talking about in another video, but these are used for accessibility purposes and for those who have turned images off in their browser, which you can do. The height is the, the height of the image and the width is the width of the image. I'm going to type in some things here and then I'm going to explain them in a little bit. Okay. The first thing we do for our image source is we type in on the location of our images, image. And we're going to be creating a images folder, which we'll talk about in a minute. And my image, <clears throat> which I'll talk about in a second, is called Bill .jpg. Notice everything is all lowercase. The height of my image is going to be 1652. And the width, I have to press return here for a second. Uh, is 1652 as well. It is a square image. All right, so what I want to do is I want to explain what this all means. And to do that, we need to go back to uh, thinking about the FTP a little bit and our, our organizational structure for our web page. So we'll do that in a, we'll do that right now. So this should look familiar to you from our, our other videos. Uh, this was our code, save, upload, refresh, repeat, right? Code in brackets, save into our web design folder, upload using FTP on FileZilla from the web design folder to the public HTML folder, and um, then refresh our Firefox developer edition uh, to be able to see our changes. And when we make more changes, we do this process over and over and over again. And now remember our best practices, which are over here on the side. Be organized, everything in lowercase. It says save. Save, it should be save very often. Um, I will fix that. Save very often. Write down passwords and use clean coding, okay, which we just uh, highlighted. Um, and for our images, the, one of the most important things uh, for our images is to ensure that we are being completely organized with what we're doing. This is the, one of the keys for making sure that when we are uploading and using and saving and referring to and finding our images is that we are completely organized. And part of that organization means that everything is also lowercase, from the file names to the extensions like .jpg or .gif or .png. Uh, an uppercase letter in, a image, in an image name that is not properly coded that way will make the image not show up. And we want to make sure that that is not going to uh, happen. So um, we're going to talk about that a little bit right now, this organization and being all lowercase. Now, if you'll notice, I have in my web design folder on my desktop right here. It's on my desktop. And I have a web design folder. And I have my index.html and my portfolio.html. Um, I've also placed an image in there, billptreyes.jpg. Okay. We need to make this more of a structured environment right here. So that I don't have like, you know, your web pages are going to have, you know, 10, maybe 12 images across the entire website. And just having them all 
in this one main area is not going to be very organized. It's, things are just going to look a little bit messy. And the, things are complicated enough that we don't want things to look uh, really messy. And we know that this web design folder that I have on my desktop is replicated in my FTP on FileZilla. So I have you see the path here, desktop, web design, and inside there are my, is my image and my two files. Okay, and we can see that in the finder here of what the folder looks like, and we can see it over here on my FTP. Now, we are going to create a directory which is another name for folder, which we talked about last time, right? Folder and directory are the same terms. They mean the same thing, pretty much. And I can create a new directory. I can right-click on this area here, create directory. And I want you to get used to creating this in the FTP. And I'm going to call this images. Okay. And as you, if you noticed over here on the left, the images folder automatically was created on in my web design folder on my computer and you can see that I have an images folder now in this directory now I'd also like you to do the same thing on your public HTML side right click and click create directory okay and then call it images where it says here images okay I'm not going to do that because I already have one that's called images from my prior work. Okay, but you can see now that I have an images folder on my public HTML side, and which is the server side, and I have an images folder or directory on the uh, computer side. Okay, and what I can do is I can drag this image, this Bill Point Reyes image, into this folder. Okay, and now on my computer my image is living in the images folder. And this is what I mean by organization. We want the things that they are to be living in the folders that make sense. So we're gonna put all of our images into our images folder. Okay? Um, we're gonna have a CSS folder and all of our CSS files are gonna go in there. Now the main directory or web design will ha hold our uh, HTML files. So I have my images folder here and inside of my images folder is my image that I'm going to be using. Now I want to talk a little bit about this because this relates to uh, relative linking uh, when we were, which we were just doing for the other day. Okay, so I want to move this out of the way for a second. I want you to still be able to see it, but I would like to move it out of the way. Here. me back uh, over there. Okay. Um, and I want to view the code that we are oops, code that we just entered into our brackets. Okay. Now think about what we just did with creating the web design the images folder inside of our web design folder, right? We just created this images folder inside of our web design folder. And so I'm going to draw that here so we can replicate that a little bit. And that will help us. And I recommend you do this too. Um, so we have our web design folder. And our web 
uh, design folder right here. Okay, and that's, for me, it's on my desktop. For most of you, it's on your desktop as well. And I am going to draw another folder now that is inside of it. It's not as nice a folder, but you get, you get my get my drift. Okay. Um, so we have these two folders now sitting inside of each other. Okay. We also have inside of our web design folder, we have our index file and we have our portfolio file. Okay. Uh, inside of my images, move my code down a little bit. Inside of the images folder, I have a file, an image file, which um, sort of just draw like this. This is an image file. It's a. <laughs> it's not the nicest image. Let me, let me do that again. Uh, I'll draw my little image file. It sort of looks like I draw a little tree that looks like this. Put some color in there, but that's sort of my image file right there. So uh, we're going to call that build point Reyes JPEG. That's this image file right here. Okay. Now, this is all being coded inside of the. This code is inside of the index.html file, right? This is what's being encoded in there. And we know that we also have inside of this web design folder, we also have our index file. And I'll just draw it over here just so it's all in the same little location. It's all in the same place. And we know this is our index.html. And let's just while we're at it, let's name this file this JPEG file. Bill to Reyes. Just so we have that all properly. So this is our organizational structure right now. Inside our web design folder, we have our index.html, we, and we also have an images folder. And inside of that is an image called buildptreyes.jpg. Now, when we are coding, when we are coding this, we need to be able to Or we need to tell the browser where to look for the image. Okay, the image source tells the browser where to look for the image. And the first thing we need to do, we need to think about where the image is in relation to the file in which we're coding. Let me say that again. We need to think about the relation of the image. Whoops, I'm on the wrong. We need to think about the relationship between where the image is. Is this not working for me? We need, sorry about that. We need to think about the relationship between this image and this file. 
how they connect to one another. That is how to get or how to tell the browser to find this image when we're in this file. Okay. It's like giving the browser directions. Okay. So if you had to get from the index.html and you had the drive to point reyes.jpg, how would you do it? And the answer is we have to start from the index. We have to go through the images folder and then down into and we will find the image. Okay. So we need to tell the browser to do that. And this is what relative linking is. Okay. The links that we did for the other night were very easy because the files were in the same directory. If you look at the FTP. The portfolio and the index files are in the same directory. So we only had to put ahref equals portfolio.html or ahrefs index.html because it's just looking in the main directory. But if there are other directories inside of the folder or in, rela in relation and in relation to the file in which you're coding, you need to give that br the browser a roadmap to get to your image. Okay. And that is what this does. The first bit the first well, that's interesting oops the first portion of this is the folder okay the first portion of this is the folder and then we have our slash, images, slash, folder, file. Okay. And that is the file name. Okay. Folder or directory, file. And because we're in the index file, it's telling the browser, look in your directory, the same directory that you're in, there's a folder called images. It knows that it's an images folder because of the slash that's there. This is getting a little confusing because the colors are all the same. Sorry about that. Um, it knows that this is a folder because of the slash that is here. Okay, and I'll back it up a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. It knows that because of this this slash indicates to the browser that you have a folder or a directory. And then inside of it, we have our file right here. Okay. And so this is how we are going to be coding our images, um, at least at first. Okay. Because our images are going to be living inside of our images folder. So when we are doing our IMG SRC equals quotation marks, the equal sign is needed. The quotation marks are absolutely needed. We are going to put our folder name first, followed by the file name. File name, all lowercase, lowercase extension. And I want to add another thing to this, to our best practices list. No oops, spaces in file names. No spaces in file names. And, an, and another one called meaningful file names. Okay. A lot of your images, when they come out of your camera, are named capital DRC and then 1002567 png okay um, and that isn't it doesn't mean anything you're going to have 20 or so images in your in your directory you want to be able to know which one it is immediately you also want to know how you also want to make it as easy as possible to write the file names down adding spaces in file names causes havoc 
at times, depending on the browser that's being used. And it adds all sorts of little characters in there that shouldn't be used. Either make it one word or put little dashes in there. I, I don't use underscores because that requires you to push a uh, shift button. It's just harder to get to it on the, um, it requires you to put the sh push the shift button down. Dashes, you just don't have to push a shift button down. It's easier. Um, and so please make your file names meaningful to what the actual image is. Now the height and the width are pretty self-explanatory. You need to know the height and the width of your image uh, so that it displays in the correct aspect ratio. And if you're not sure how to do that, um, you can right-click on your image and click Get Info. And this should be the same on a PC or a Mac or similar. And it will tell you under the More Info heading uh, the dimensions of it. You could also just open it up in Photoshop and look at it. Uh, I'll look at it there. Okay. And we're going to talk about alt and title uh, at a later date. So we're adding to our best practices um, no spaces in file names and having meaningful file names. And we know that the code is structured to represent our folder directories and our file directories. So let me go back to brackets now. And I'm going to show you something really cool that Brackets does for you when you're looking for images. And this can do it for links too, I believe. So um, I've typed, I've got my basics in here. I'm going to start typing in images. And as I do that, it knows that I have a folder in there that's called images. It knows that because it's looking in the source and the index file is in the same directory or the same folder as the images folder. They're both in the web design folder. So I can click on this and it will type it for me. And then I can click on the name of the image and it pops it right in there. It's so user friendly and it's very exciting. And that's it. That's all I need to do if I want to code an image. I will now save the file and I will go to my FTP and I will refresh and I will click on the index and I will drag it across the screen and it will say do you want to overwrite and I will say yes and then I will go back to my brackets and I will click refresh and I will see my image and what is this I just see a gigantic box what is that all about the image isn't there so I'm going to go and check the code to see if it uploaded properly And I see it. I see it's there. I see it's right. Um, but the problem is, and uh, the reason I'm highlighting this is because this is a mistake that uh, is often made. And that is that you also have to upload your image. Okay. We have our images folder. We have to double click on that. And we have to upload the image itself that image needs to be put on the website. It needs to be put online. If you want it to be seen online, you must upload it to the server. And here it is right here. And now I can click Refresh. And I can say, whoa, that is a much too big picture of Bill. <laughs> that is humongous. Um, I seem very happy. And uh, that's great, because I'm in one of my favorite places in the world, Point Reyes uh, National Seashore. And, uh, but I need to fix this. This is just too big. We don't want a picture that's just going to be so, so large on our page. Not something like a headshot or a portrait or something like that, um, unless this is for like an artistic thing. But for our purposes, it's not. Um, what's nice about this square image is I can just change this so that the aspect ratio is exactly the same, the height and width are the same. Um, if you have one that is, uh, the landscape view or vertical or uh, um, portrait view, you need to figure out what the dimensions will be. So you'll have to resize it somehow, uh, either in, in the Photoshop or other image editor to help you figure out what those sizes are going to be. Okay, I'm going to save this and I've made these changes. I need to go back to my FileZilla. I need to go back and I click on this little folder to go back to my web design. 
I could also just click on it up here. I'm going to refresh. I'm going to re-upload my index. I do not need to upload my image again because it's already there. And I'm going to go to Firefox. I'll refresh it. Ah, and that's a little bit more like it. And so now my image is on the web. And that's uh, very exciting for me. I've got my first image up there. Um, now, this is just a portrait, but we're going to be putting other images up there, pictures from uh, for your portfolio, for example. Uh, so we're going to be spending a lot of time with our images. So for, I would like you, and it's going to say this in your homework, to redesign your front page so that you have a much more friendly space if people come across it while we're working on it. So someone says, hello, my name is Bill Wolf, or whatever your name is, and welcome to my page, which is I'm currently developing in a web design class. Uh, and put a picture of yourself or something that represents you uh, that is welcoming and uh, tell people they can come back. If you want to put a link to your blog while you're working on this, you can. Just like we have a link to our other websites, you know how to do that. You make an absolute link to your blog. Um, if you've just moved it, it would be your URL slash blog slash. And uh, this is how we do our images. Um, it's, it's a wonderful thing getting our images up online. Have a lot of fun with it. Um, as always, if you have questions for me, please let me know. I am, of course, more than happy to help. And I look forward to talking with you about all this stuff next, next time we meet. Have a great day. Bye-bye.